ladies and gentlemen, let's meet these distinguished members of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. A profoundly influential and greatly successful football and baseball coach at the University of Louisiana Lafayette, LSU, and Nichols State University, represented by his children, Dee Dee, Cherie, and Chip, and joining his brother, Melvin, in the Hall of Fame, the late Raymond Didier. Coaches come and go, but how often do you find a coach that's won, had championship success at three different schools? That was the late Raymond Didier. Please take a look. Raymond Didier touched three different sports programs in the state prominently, primarily in the sport of baseball, and he coached the first Louisiana team to seriously challenge for a national baseball championship. That success at three different state schools is something that impresses a coach at one of the schools where Didier excelled. When you have major institutions that you've been to, um, things change because there's things that are different at every institution. But the one thing that didn't change for him is his ability to win, his ability to be successful. And I think what he did was he brought uh, a foundation um, and, 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 and a plan um, that was, was so good that it worked at multiple universities because that's not always the case. Many coaches have changed jobs and crashed and burned at the next school they went to. Um, so it's not always the same. But when you're able to stay consistent like that at every place you've been to, I definitely think that's Hall of Fame characteristics. His coaching career started at then SLI in 1948, winning five conference titles in baseball. He then moved to LSU, where his team would go on to win the 1961 SEC title in a playoff that ended before a then rare sellout crowd at Alex Box Stadium. Winning the SEC championship with Coach DDA uh, was the greatest thrill of my life. And I think the thing that shows you how well he had coached us is that over half of our victories were by one run. So we, you know, you know, we had to be doing the right things at the right time or it never would have happened. I think he had nothing but the greatest respect from each and all of us and we're thrilled that he's getting the honor that he's getting. In 1963, he was named head baseball coach and athletic director at Nickel State University, where he won 217 games, including making the 1970 Division II College World Series Finals. He took a bunch of little country guys, and basically most of his team were from Baton Rouge, New Orleans, in the river here. And he took a bunch of local guys, and it was, was not, I guess he made us all overachieve, you know what I mean? And he pushed us to that limit. And uh, the little things that he taught you in baseball have just, have just trickled down into the high school ranks. And a lot of us became high school coaches, and a lot of us handed that information down, especially when it came to fundamentals. He certainly left a staple on, this, on the game of baseball in Louisiana that, that, spread, that spread throughout the, the entire South. The Didier family, um, you know, maybe brought baseball to South Louisiana. And, and just every day when you get to walk through that stadium and see his plaque, and I remember the day showing his brother Mel, Years ago when Mel came to speak at our first pitch banquet, I remember being able to walk with him out on the field for the first time. And I remember him putting his hand on his brother's plaque. And that, that was a touching moment for him, but I know for me, it was special. So I, I feel like part of my, my job at Nichols is to make sure I beautify the stadium as much as we can. And, and we're certain as long as I'm the head coach and lucky enough to do it, I'm gonna to continue to do that for him. This Hall of Famer left us much too young, but he leaves a legacy of success that is remembered tonight. His name is permanently a part of the Nichols Baseball Stadium, and tonight his name is added to the roles of this state's great sports shrine. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting will be his daughter, Dee Dee Kazdasu, as we salute Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Raymond Didier.
This is harder than we thought it would be. You know, it's exciting, but it's our daddy, so it's hard to do this. I'm Dossie Dean, DDA Castasu. This is my sister Sherry, DDA. Where's my baby brother? My baby brother's <laughs> right here, Chip DDA. We want to thank the members of the Sports Writers Committee that voted to put our dad into this amazing body of sports legends in the state of Louisiana. Our father dedicated a lifetime to providing a future for young men through academics and athletics. He devoted over 40 years of his coaching life to mentor and guide student athletes and pre prepare them for life after college. And although his teams won many conference championships and he took the first baseball team from the state of Louisiana to a national NCAA tournament, he always said that his best reward was seeing his boys, and I put that in quote because they were his boys, go on to a productive, successful life. He was never so proud than when any of the boys from the three state universities would come back, contact him, or visit him after leaving college. Two of the boys that he coached were his own brothers, Mel DDA and Gerald DDA. Uncle Melvin is a member of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, making him and our dad, one of three sets of brothers inducted into this Hall of Fame. Uncle Melvin has written a short letter to us and to our families because he couldn't be here tonight. It's about Daddy, and he's requested that I read it. To Dossie Dean, Sherry, and Chip, several months ago, I was informed that your dad, my brother, was being inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Doug Ireland, director, called and informed me that we were only the third set of brothers to have been put in this prestigious Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Raymond has richly deserved this honor for the work he has done in the sports world of Louisiana and the nation. I don't know if you realize this, but Raymond was my baseball coach in American Legion in Baton Rouge in the late 30s and 40s. He set an example for coaching and teaching players not only on how to play the game, but also the many trials and tribulations that young men must go through as players. I owe Ray a lot, and I'm sure that my brother Gerald, who played for him at SLI, now ULL, and who then signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers, owes him a great deal for having a successful minor league career. To Aideen, his wife, who has passed away, and who was such a huge figure in his teaching and to his entire family, I want to let you know that Raymond deserves a great deal of credit for much of the success which I have had in coaching and in professional baseball for 65 years. I owe him a lot. I only wish that I could be there on this monumental occasion. Much love, Uncle Mel. The 1970 Nichols Championship Baseball Team dedicated a monument to our dad, funded by 100 farmer Nichols athletes, managers, trainers, and Big Sam, the Nichols athletic bus driver. I have to take a breath here. Dee Dee Bro told me to breathe and I'm not doing it. <laughs> that monument is located at the main gate to the Ray DDA baseball stadium on Nichols campus and sums up what our dad's life was all about. The inscription reads, to live in the hearts you leave behind is not to die. Looking around this room, we see Dad's legacy. Former athletes, family, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and friends. We've had so many phone calls and letters from former athletes and family congratulating our dad on this honor. They all shared wonderful stories of him with us. The outpouring of love has been amazing. Our regret is that our dad is not here to receive this honor himself, and that our mother, Aideen, who passed away a year and a half ago, is not here. She would have been over the moon, as are we. Thank you. Congratulations, Daddy.